أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقالوا كونوا هودا أو نصارا تهتدوا قل بل ملة إبراهيم حنيفا وما كان من المشركين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر أمين رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته and Ramadan Mubarak to all of you I wanted to uh, take this opportunity to introduce what I plan on doing this Ramadan uh, I've after you know quite a few years of studying uh, the Quran as to the best of my ability and I'm still very much a student of the Quran I've come to certain conclusions that I think um, scholars much more qualified than myself have talked about in many places, but I see a disconnect between what is talked about in scholarly circles and what is known among the average Muslims. And one of those things is the role of Ibrahim السلام, in understanding Islam itself. So there are stories of prophets السلام, that are really important. All of them play a significant role, but actually, you have to know the place, the placement of something and the actual role that it plays, the significance of it and the connection between other parts. So the stories of the prophets in the Quran are actually, the vast majority of them are deeply connected to each other. They're part of a larger narrative. They're like pieces of a puzzle. And Ibrahim السلام, is a very fundamental piece of that puzzle. I would even argue that understanding the, the seerah of our messenger and the mission of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is next to impossible. The overall objective of the, the life of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is nearly impossible to understand without understanding the connection that mission has to Ibrahim alayhi salam. It's not just understanding that connection though. When you, when you and I understand that connection, our view of what, what Ibrahim alayhi salam saw the world as, his, he had a world view. Right? And that worldview was lost for thousands of years. And then Allah wanted that that Abrahamic worldview, the, the, the worldview of Ibrahim السلام, should become the way that every believer sees the world. The, the way they see Allah Himself, the way they understand Allah Himself, the way they understand their life, the way they understand the afterlife, the way they understand other nations and other people. All of it actually in one way or the other ties back to the, the, the way that Ibrahim السلام, saw the world. This is a very special messenger of Allah. And he is special. You cannot even compare him to other messengers of Allah up until the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that Allah tested him in ways that no other messenger was tested. Allah gave him ways of making da'wah that no other messenger was given. So for just as a couple of examples, no messenger before Ibrahim or after Ibrahim alayhi salam was given the instruction to slaughter their own child. That's never happened. That's not something that is found in the legacy of any prophet except Ibrahim alayhi salam. There are pretty, pretty much every prophet in the Quran other than the prophets of the Israelites alayhi salatu wasalam, they are making da'wah to people who do shirk and so many of them people used to worship idols, right? And that's, you find these kinds of false gods being talked about in the legacies of different prophets. However, no prophet ever went and broke the idols. They didn't do that. And they didn't do that as a demonstration to make the point about what the idols are. Similarly, even if they were false gods, no prophets went around to demonstrate how silly those beliefs are to go around and say, oh, this must be the real God. This is a bigger one. Oh, this must be my God. Oh, this must be my... Oh, no, that doesn't make any sense. Meaning to demonstrate the falsehood, the wrongness of shirk by playing along. But Ibrahim alayhi salam does that. Hada rabbi, hada akbar. لا أحب الآفلين. He says that in the Quran, right? So he's doing things that no prophet has done before him. And he's being tested in ways that no prophet has tested before him. He has to, he has to uh, engage. And, and remarkably, you know, other nations, they, uh, other prophets, they have nations. They have nations. But Ibrahim alayhi salam himself is called millatan, ummatan. He's called an ummah by himself. Inna Ibrahima kana ummatan. Ibrahim alayhi salam by himself was a nation. So in many ways, you can already tell when you study Quran, this messenger is in a different position than the other messengers of Allah. But there's more. Our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa is being told explicitly, 
you know, فَاتَّبِعْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا Follow the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Follow the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And you know the famous surah you recite at the end of the Qur'an, the short surahs, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ Right? When Quraysh were being told Allah has done them so many favors, and Allah reminded them, well, because Allah has done them so many favors, they shouldn't be putting idols around the Kaaba. They should be worshipping the Rabb of this house. The Rabb of this house. Instead of saying, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ He says, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ They should worship the master of this house. The reference to this house goes back to the one who built this house and for the purpose for, the purpose for which he built it. And that's Ibrahim alayhi salam. Again, in the, at the end of the Qur'an, when Allah talked about the favors He has done to uh, the Quraysh, there are two favors that He's done, two big favors that He did to the Quraysh, even though they worshipped idols. One favor He did to them is He protected them from destruction. They were powerless people. They're in the desert. They don't have a super army. They're not like the Roman Empire or the Persian Empire or even Abraha or anybody else. They don't have that kind of military capacity. And they are in a valley. So they're easy to attack actually from above, in fact. So they are in this disadvantageous position, and yet Allah Azza wa says, Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka fi ashabil fil. Many of you know the surah. Allah protected them even though the odds against them were impossible. And then in the next surah, He says, So that's, that's the first favor, safety. He provided them safety. But the other is they were in the desert. And in the desert, you're not going to get a lot of crop, you're not going to get fruits, you're not going to get means of Sustaining yourself. There are societies, the human civilization prefer to settle down where the soil was, you know, it's easy to irrigate, right? So many, many cultures in the world, they left their, their harsh climates to go to places where they could get better soil so they can make their own food. Like if you study even, for example, Nor the Norwe Nor Norwegians and the Vikings or whatever, <laughs> they travel different parts of the world because the, their part of the world is bitterly cold. And they can freeze to death. So they're ending up in England and in Russia, all over the place. Why? Because they want farmland at the end of the day. But these people don't have any farmland. They don't have any agriculture. They, how are they going to sustain themselves? They only, they, they're going to have to survive majority by imported food, you see? And the countries even to this day, for example, if you go to countries like Qatar or you know, the Emirates or these kinds of countries, huge amounts of their food is actually imported. You know, just recently they, they imported several thousand cows <laughs> just so they can have their own milk and they can have their own dairy products, right? So the idea is that region is not sustainable for food. What, what did Allah do? He said, رِحْلَةَ الشِّتَاءِ saif. They could travel summer and winter. They can import goods and make money. Not only are they getting food, they're getting wealthy too. So the two things Allah did for the Quraysh was He gave them safety and He provided for them. And the safety was otherwise impossible for them. And the provision was also otherwise impossible for them. Those two things were impossible. But why am I mentioning these two things? What's the connection to that in Ibrahim alayhi salam? Ibrahim alayhi salam, thousands of years ago when he built this Kaaba, he said, رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا وَرْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ Make this house a peaceful place. Make this land a peaceful city. Pr protect it. And provide its people from all kinds of fruit. So thousands of years later in the seerah of the Prophet wasallam, the Quraysh live the kind of life that they live because the dua of Ibrahim salam is answered actually. So they're living, they're living the echo of the dua of Ibrahim salam. So the entire seerah actually takes place. The mission of the Prophet wasallam takes place and the, in the background of it constantly is actually the legacy of Ibrahim salam. That applies to him, it also applies to the Quraysh. Now that's one side of it. But our Messenger وسلم, he had two different audiences. The Messenger وسلم, in Mecca, pre predominantly he was dealing with Quraysh, the Arabs who became pagans. But then in Medina, and sometime even before when he, he moved to Medina وسلم, he was also dealing with the Jewish and the Christian people. And the Jewish and the Christian people are a very different civilization than the, Arab, the, the Arabs of Mecca. They're completely different history, completely different religious background, and even the Jews are very different from the Christians. They're even very different from each other. But they had something, all three of these people had something in common. The Quraysh are putting idols around the house built by Ibrahim alayhi salam. The Jews call themselves children of their father Ibrahim alayhi salam. The Christians consider themselves the religion of Abraham. 
every one of them takes credit for being loyal to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Every, all three of the audiences of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the Quran comes in this backdrop. Even nowadays, if you go to an interfaith event or you talk to Jewish and Christian friends, pastors, rabbis, they'll call themselves the Abrahamic faiths because they have some tie to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And this was true even then. So what did Allah do? Allah says, Inna awla nasi bi Ibrahima lalladheena tabauhu wa hadha nabi wallatheena amanu. He said, the people that have the right to claim Ibrahim the most, the people that have the closest connection to Ibrahim alayhi salam are the people who followed him. And who else? And this Prophet. And those who believe along with him. You see? So what did Allah do? Allah claimed Ibrahim alayhi salam for the Muslims. And this is going to be offensive to three groups. This is going to be offensive to the Quraysh because they feel that they're the children of Ibrahim alayhi salam through Ismail and they claim that even though they do shirk, even though they do shirk, they, they, follow, they still follow those rituals. Why do you think Hajj was already there? Hajj didn't come with Islam. Hajj was purified by Islam. Hajj was already there. They were doing it every year. They had four sacred months even before the Prophet came sallallahu alayhi wa They were slaughtering the animal too. They were doing all of this stuff too. Safa and Marwa was already there. Zamzam was already there. Tawaf was already happening, but it was happening with shirk. It was happening with corruption. So they claimed these things and they attributed them to Ibrahim alayhi salam too. And the Jews and the Christians did so too. So Allah, first thing Allah did, especially in Medina, what he does is he reclaims Ibrahim alayhi salam and he challenges the Jewish and the Christian people of the time. He challenges them. Let's see who's more loyal to Ibrahim alayhi salam. So the conversation wasn't even, let's see which one is the right religion, you see? Because that's the way we think. The real conversation was, who's being true to the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam? That was the conversation happening in the Qur'an. So, وَقَالُوا كُونُوا هُدًا أَوْ نَصَارَ تَحْتَدُوا They say, I, I recited this in the beginning of today's verse, they said, what did they say? Be Jewish, be Christian, you'll have guidance. You'll be committed, that means you're committed to guidance if you become Jewish or a Christian. قُلْ, tell them. بَلْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا No, instead, the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Hanifan, exclusively. وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And he wasn't from those who did shirk. قُولُوا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ Tell them, we believe in Allah. We, we have come to believe in Allah. And we believe in what was revealed to us, what was sent down to us. And what was sent down to Ibrahim, and Ismail, and Ishaq, and Yaqub. And their lineages, and what was given to Musa and Isa, when Nabi Yunamil, and all the prophets before. Well, which prophet started that entire chain in the ayah? Ibrahim alayhi The first claim you make is we believe in the revelation given to us, which ties directly to the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And all the other prophets that are mentioned in that ayah are from the lineage of Ibrahim alayhi salam, actually. The rest of it is all the, the chain reaction to Ibrahim alayhi salam from there on. Similarly, Am taquluna inna Ibrahima. وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَالْأَصْبَاطَ كَانُوا هُدًا أو نَصَارًا Are you people saying that Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub, and their lineage, meaning Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and their lineages, كَانُوا هُدًا أو نَصَارًا They were Jewish or Christian? قُلْ أَنْتُمْ أَعْلَمُوا أَمِنْ اللَّهِ Tell them, do you know better or Allah Himself? Other places in the Quran, مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِي Abraham was neither Jewish nor Christian. In, in fact, he was a, a, an exclusively in, in surrender to Allah, Hanif and Muslim. And he was a Muslim, meaning in complete surrender to Allah. And he never committed any kinds of shirk. Over and over again, Allah is reclaiming and reclaiming and reclaiming. As if one of the most fundamental conversations we're having with the Jewish and Christian people. By the way, the Christian people being the, the largest religion in the world, right? It's not a small thing that the Roman Empire had adopted the Christian religion. The Abyssinians had adopted the Christian religion. There were so many variations of Christianity, but all of them had similar creed, if not the same. And all of them had a tie to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And the way that conversation was supposed to happen was to tie everything back to Ibrahim alayhi salam and claim and bring the truth back about Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ya Ahl al-Kitab, lima tuhajjuna fi Ibrahim wa ma unzilat al-Tawrat wa al-Injil illa min ba'dihi afala taqilun. People of the book, why are you arguing about Abraham? And the Torah and the Injil were revealed much after him. How come you don't understand? In other, and you could say, in response, a Jewish or Christian argument could be, well, the Quran was revealed after him too. 
Well, you know what the answer to that is? We're saying, yes, it was revealed after him. But the Qur'an is going back to his religion. It's not re-engineering him to be someone else. It's not hijacking his legacy. It's not retelling his story to make it fit your narrative. In fact, the Qur'an's own narrative is the narrative of Ibrahim alayhi salam himself. You see? You know what some, some theologians had to do in the Jewish and Christian religions? Well, St. Augustine comes along and says, you can only go to heaven uh, if you believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Right? You can only go to heaven by accepting Jesus as the Son of God. And He's going to save you on Judgment Day. Well, that's a problem because Abraham came way before Jesus. So is he going to hell now? Because he didn't accept Jesus. Because Jesus wasn't even there. So that became a theological problem. So they had to solve creative solutions that some theologians came up with. Well, on Judgment Day, there's going to be an elevator stop. And before he goes to before Judgment, he's going to have to accept Jesus and then he's going to go. Or secretly, he already accepted Jesus. He just didn't tell us. There's different creative solutions. But they, can't, they have to do all this stuff to justify that position. You see? The other side, the Jewish people, we're going to read more about them and what they did with the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. But the point, that the, the starting point for our conversations is going to be, why is this messenger so important? And some of the reasons, just a glimpse of the reasons that I wanted to start with is, is the conversation that Allah is have, Allah's messenger is having alayhi salam, through the Qur'an with the mushrikun of Makkah, and the discourse that's taking place with the Jewish and the Christian people in Medina, all of it centers around, at the heart of it all, is actually Ibrahim alayhi salam. That is the central position that he occupies. So understanding him and understanding everything Allah tells us about him becomes that extremely important. So my, my, um, my dua to Allah azza wa jal in this series that we're going to continue, I want to keep the session short so you have things to think about and things to remember and things to retain. You know, I could give long, long lectures, but that's not the point. Actually, what I want is, you know, things that you guys listen to, less than 20 minutes, 15, 17, 18 minutes, and you just, when you're done, when you're leaving, you talk about it with your family. This, think of this, I should think of this, and you should think of this, that we're getting to know our father better. Allah calls him our father. Ibrahim. The name of this series is the religion of your father, Ibrahim. Allah has declared him our father. Just like he declared the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu our mothers. Just like that, he declared Ibrahim Alayhi Salam our father. Our biological father is Adam Alayhi Salam. But our spiritual father is Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. Our biological mother is our, our, our actual moms. Our spiritual mothers are the mothers of the believers. You understand? So there is this concept of spiritual fatherhood in, in our deen. And so it doesn't matter what continent you come from, what culture you come from, we all share a father spiritually, and that is Ibrahim alayhi salam. And we're going to get to know our father better and better, inshallah ta'ala. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikil hakim.